<laughs> now to put them beside some. Now to put them beside some. Are you kidding me? Hello, my friends, and welcome back to Player Display. So today we're going to be doing kind of a two-for-one special, and this is because they are both from the new comic line. So on the left, we have Mara Jade from Legends, and on the right, we have Mike from, I believe, the Darth Vader comics, which are still canon. So this is going to be an interesting two-part review, and I do this for two reasons. First of all, I don't know either of their stories, so hopefully that means I won't have too much information to say about each of them. Liar! And secondly, they are both kind of familiar because they do have their share of reuse, so when it actually comes to the figures themselves, lore aside, there won't be quite as much to discuss. So while both of these figures, along with a lot of figures that we've been seeing lately, are pretty solid, there's definitely one which I really like a lot, another which is, eh, okay, try and guess which is which. But all that being said, let's get Mike out of the way so we could start with the showrunner who is definitely Mara Jade. So as we do, let's go ahead and start with the box, which has a few surprises in store for us. So at the top, you can see Star Wars Dark Force Rising, which I believe is one of the comics Mara Jade appeared in. For those of you who don't know who Mara Jade is, um, I guess the worst way I could possibly explain her is that she is technically one of the worst assassins in Star Wars history. <laughs> um, that's taking away a lot. She was actually an assassin appointed by it's either Vader or Sidious, I can't remember which, who was very powerful the dark side of the force and she was sent out to hunt down luke skywalker and kill and or turn him but instead she wound up falling in love and they became husband and wife so for those of you who are wondering wait wait who's this lady she wasn't in a star war she's from the legends continuity so this is technically a figure of a character who at least in the house of mouse's eyes no longer exists but she's a very big fan favorite and i think she's been on a lot of bucket lists including my own even though i don't know a whole ton about her and then of course you get a really nice graphic of mara jade from one of the comics and pretty much every time you see her she looks very different like in the 80s she definitely had that sort of hair metal hairdo going on with her classic vibrant red locks kind of just flowing in the wind but then you also occasionally see her with this tunic going around with her going around her head with some nice goggles at the top which we kind of see emulated in the actual figure down at the bottom you get her name along with a nice little tag that says legends and remind you that this is not um, at least in Disney's eyes, a, a real character, which is kind of unfortunate. We could have a whole discussion on that. On the left side, we have Mara Jade's name, along with another very nice portrait of the character. On this side, we have even more images of the character as she appears in the cartoons and comics. On the top, it continues on with a nice zat blast effect going into a silhouetted stranger's face, uh, kind of hearkening back to her dark side roots, I guess. On the back, things change up a little bit here. We don't get our usual uh, description and silhouetted profile of the character. Instead, we have a few more shots of the character from the source material, which is always a good thing. You can never have too much of that. And then we actually have a picture of the figure herself, also telling you how tall she is. So that's kind of a neat change. And then you also have a look at her two accessories, which are her blaster and her classic purple lightsaber. Down towards the bottom, you get all your warnings that no one really cares about. And then on the bottom, in right corner we get our usual sad audience then panning down to the bottom of the box of course they have to finish our warning label family over here we have a rather new one garbage day down here things get a little bit more familiar here we have green arrow aslan <gasps> c e u k canada one new one e a c and of course i am superman and then on the bottom, you get another portrait of Mara Jade, along with the sticker, which really, really wants to tell you that this is plastic-free packaging. And then, of course, we're pretty familiar with these comic book packagings by now. Of course, you get the box, and then you open the, the flap so that way you can see the figure. Uh? Wait a minute, where's the figure? Where's the bubble? This is their solution for the plastic-free packaging. You don't ever see the figure until you open the box, and they're very committed to that, obviously. Like, what a tease. Come on, that's strange. I mean, it's nice that we get some more artwork of the character, which is always good, and then a very good glamour shot of the figure itself. Like, this feels unnecessary. It's ironic how they're trying to save material, yet they're using another paper panel that isn't necessary at all but whatever it's still a pretty box even though it makes no sense to me 
And if, like me, you're not too familiar with the lore, you can go ahead and read the multilingual bios that they have on this inner flap here. All right, now for the fun part, we can actually have a look at this figure. And before we actually get into her, I, I do believe this is a reuse of the Jaina Solo body from way back when. I think she was like a fan's choice. And now that Mara Jade is here, I kind of regret that I don't have her niece. But at the same time, this figure also makes me confident that they won't only re-release Jaina Solo, but also release her with the new packaging and also photo reel, and then release some of her other siblings and parental figures, like, um, of course, we have Mara's son, Darth Cadis, who would also be very cool to have, who is pretty much the original Kylo Ren, if you've seen my podcasts. But yeah, let's have a look at the figure straight away. So first, let's have a look at Mara Jade's face, and of course, it's not meant to look like anyone in particular. This is based on a fictionalized character, after all, who I think we've only seen once in live-action form, being in video game cutscenes. I can't remember in which game series. Um, that was a little before my time. But that being said, when you look at this figure and you know who Marjade is, you look at this figure and you're like, yeah, that's her. It works. It looks really good. And as I said, she had a lot of different hairstyles throughout the comics. But the, here you get just pretty standard uh, red locks just going straight down. And it's very beautifully sculpted. I like it a lot. It got some swift motion going on. It doesn't feel too flat. Um, maybe a little bit of dry brushing would have been nice. But uh, that being said, it's got some depth within the crevices of the hair to give it a little bit more dimension, which is always well done. Going a little closer to the face, you could see some very nicely applied photo reel, um, what looks like green eyes, and then also some eyebrows, some well applied lips, and yeah, nothing to complain about here. And also, it's not too shiny. On the neck, you could see that the tunic that she had around her head from the cover art of the box is actually down here, and I it looks really good. I like how it wraps around. It has a nice sandy texture to it, and they also went out of their way to make the lenses transparent, which they didn't need to do, but I'm glad they did. So it's a nice piece, but I wish that they maybe included an additional head sculpt that did have this tunic part going around. I mean, it's a comic figure. They're a little bit more pricey. They have very special packaging. So it would be nice if they could spruce them up with a little bit more extra accessories. Going down, we have a very classic Star Wars jumpsuit looking really good with no sleeves or anything. Not a whole lot of paintwork for the torso, which is kind of unfortunate. But you can make out a very distinct and very rare ab crunch, which you almost never see for Black Series figures. I mean, the only one I could name that does have this is Jaina. And again, this is the same body Mold, so that's to be expected. Down on the waist, uh, kind of more Han Solo vibes, which is interesting. You've got the holster that kind of slings up to the belt, and it's got a little bit of paint chipping there, but nothing too bad, nothing that can't be fixed, not a big deal. Um, there are definitely some missed opportunities when it comes to the silver paint apps, like you've got some buttons in the back there. It would have been nice to have those, but not the worst thing ever. The arms are totally bare, and then you can make out their articulation, so it's not a totally seamless thing, but I really don't care about that too much. And you also have some good gloved hands. You have one that hinges up and down, and then one that hinges hinges in and out. Uh, those are very good for the two varied accessories that she has, which we will look at soon. Going down, more of that uh, jumpsuit with the slate black. Uh, a little bit of weathering might have been nice to spruce her up, make her look look a little bit more uh, grungy, I suppose, but this works, it all looks good, and then it all comes down to two boots, which are just boots. Moving on to our two accessories, we'll start out with this blaster, which I am not sure if we've seen it before. We've definitely seen very similar blasters at the very least. It's kind of molded in a gunmetal gray, and then the tip is painted in a nice silver application, and it doesn't look too rough or anything. Um, a little bit of a dry brush with silver would have been cool to bring it out a little bit more, but that's kind of a uh, what to be ex what is to be expected from Black Series figures these days. Very nice sculpts, it's just there are some paint decisions that leave a little bit to be desired. You of course have two display options when it comes to this blaster. You can firstly put it in her right hand, which articulates up and down, and has a very nice trigger finger available to hold this blaster. Uh, you gotta bend it around a little bit, but then eventually you get it in, and it looks pretty natural. So now you got a little bit of her smuggler thing going on, looking really nice. You can also take it out and then slide it into the holster. You don't have that button loop that goes down from the top. So you can just go ahead and slide it right in and it looks really good. 
Then her second and definitely her most iconic accessory is her purple lightsaber, and I'm actually really surprised with the effort they put into this hilt. It has not only a very good silver sheen, which I think is a little bit stronger than examples we've seen in the past, but also the purple blade um, is very nicely colored, of course, but when you peg it out, I like how it's a little bit differently executed from how you've seen in the past. You could sort of make out how the bottom of the main blade is not rounded. It kind of just flattens out and goes right into the peg, which I really like. So there's not no more of that ambiguity when you're plugging it in or out. And also the peg isn't as stubby. It's more of just a straight cylinder and it barely has a notch. So when you put it back into the hilt, it, it feels nice and clean. It doesn't feel like you kind of got to jimmy it around, feeling like it's going to break or anything like that. So whatever they did to this lightsaber, I really like the execution. And then, of course, you can actually put this into either of her hands. You could put it in the blaster hand, and this is really where I have my only issue with this figure. Of course, you have it hinge up and down, which is really good for any lightsaber-wielding figure, but I find this hand can tend to be a little bit loose for this saber, um, although you can kind of use your fingers to kind of clench it around it a little bit more to your liking, and then it stays in okay. So, see, I just tapped it and it kind of just fell right out. So that's a little bit of a bummer. It was a little bit tighter when I took it out of the box. But then you can also put it in this articulating in and out hand here, and it's a little bit tighter, but and it'll keep it more stable, but you won't have that up and down action to get her in those more dynamic poses. But then again, you could also just have her with both of these kind of dual wielding, which would be really cool to see in cinema. I don't think we've seen a character wield a blaster and a saber at once. Maybe Prey Vizsla from Clone Wars, I'm not too sure. But yeah, you can have her holding both of them, and she still looks really cool. Moving on to the articulation, we have a surprisingly good swivel, which is interesting considering the long hair that we have in the back, which would usually stop it from going anywhere. But then you also have a little bit of tilt, more to the left than the right, I feel. Uh, her head can crunch uh, kind of down, although it's kind of weird how this uh, tunic kind of pops up a little bit, so it feels a little bit awkward. She definitely can't go back at all. The shoulders, they swivel all the way around. They have pinless elbows, which are single-jointed and go past 90. Again, she has one up and down wrist for the blaster or lightsaber. And then on the other hand, you have in and out, which goes really well. As for the torso, you have a ball joint in the upper torso that can swivel, it can tilt that side to that side, and then on its own, holding the ab crunch, it can go a little bit in and quite a good deal back, but of course, it'll be further escalated when you do utilize that ab joint, where she goes much more down and much more back. Whoa, that's almost exorcist, right? <laughs> Jeez, look at that. Going downwards, there is no way swivel, which you don't always see with Star Wars The Black Series, so not a huge deal there. But the legs, they do swivel at the thigh. Um, this right leg is actually not hindered by that holster. I don't feel getting in the way at all, which is really good. They kick all the way forward. Um, they kind of V out when they go backwards, but they go back a good amount. They kick to the side. Whoa, <laughs> this is definitely an older leg. You saw it warp there at the knee that we're about to get to. But she can't do a full split, but she gets a little bit close. Um, you do notice this base figure's age when you see not only the pin joints, but also kind of what you saw before. They kind of get a little bit weird when they bend off to the side. But all that being said, they are double jointed. They get you all the range that you want and perhaps a little bit more. As for the ankles, you got some rocker and then you have pretty good back pretty good forward, and then excellent rocker. So really for me, no complaints in the articulation department. Looking pretty good. Now let's hop over to Scar Trooper Mike, who I'll go through a little bit more quickly because you've already looked at the comic style box. And frankly, the rest of the body on the figure doesn't have a whole lot of new offerings from the original release. But anyways, you got some really awesome comic art here that make for a fine poster. You have this art on the side with his name. On the side, you have more shots from the comic series. You got some more on the top. And on the back, you get that picture with the figure itself. And then more shots from the comics. You got more warning labels. I'm only going to do that to you once per episode. So don't worry, we're not going to go through that again. And you got some more comic shots on the bottom with some more of his Stormtrooper brothers. And then you get the usual plastic free sticker over there. Go ahead and opening it up. Same exact treatment. You get the comic art on the left. They have another glamour shot of the figure on the right. 
Then when you get up close, you get your multilingual bios to teach you a little bit about Task Force 99 and Scar Trooper Mike's role within the squadron. As for Mike here, he's... He's okay, he's fine, he serves his purpose, but he does have a few flukes, which we'll get into. But let's go ahead and start with the head sculpt, which is one of the two most unique things on this figure. And, um, it's okay. I feel like it could be hitting a little bit differently, but it is accurate to the comic, so really there isn't much to complain about here. It actually kind of reminds me of the Clone Trooper Engineer from the original Bioware Star Wars Battlefront 2, so that actually helps me to enjoy this a little more. I also appreciate how the eye lens is not separated in the middle, so it's almost like he's kind of a mid-ground between a clone trooper and a classic stormtrooper, so I do appreciate that. On the side, you have a little bit of an antenna, because I believe he is kind of the tech for Scar Squadron, which is pretty cool. And then he also has some extra sculpt details there. I wouldn't be able to tell you what purpose those have, if anything at all. On the back, it kind of just looks like a standard Stormtrooper helmet. Going down, there's not a whole lot else to see. Um, I guess on the torso, you have some black accent marks there, which are not sculpted in. So this is probably the exact same body that we've been seeing with other Stormtroopers. Going around to the arms... Mm, so, remember that time where I theorized that now that we'd be getting the green packaging, we wouldn't have to worry about warping as much? Well, clearly I was wrong. You fool! Obviously, this is nothing that hot water can't fix, but again, that was one of my negotiations. If Hasbro's gonna go ahead and create green packaging, then be sure there are not any QC issues. This is a QC issue, so... That's kind of a knock on them for me. You you can't really excuse that. Going down, um, everything's pretty much the same if you've seen these bodies before, except you do have a green uh, arm pad that we did see before on Creel. And this is also a loose piece, by the way. Um, I guess if you wanted to somehow uh, heat up this wrist and pop out that hand, then you could remove this. I don't see why you'd want to, but that is an option that's in the cards if you would like. Going down to the legs, all classic Stormtrooper armor, usual body glove. Um, really no other changes to the base figure here. He has two accessories, which do leave a little bit to be desired, but they're comic accurate, so I guess I can't really complain, and I can't say that I've actually read the comics myself, so uh, there's not a whole lot I could do to criticize them or anything, but all that being said, here's his um, classic E11, which looks really good. I like the extended magazine. I don't think they all have that, so that makes this one a little bit more unique. I don't know if he's seen this exact sculpt before, although I'd put money on the fact that we probably have. Um, sometimes they miss putting the silver in that little cartridge section right there. Sometimes they have it, sometimes they don't. And then you also have a cool scope along the top, which looks really good as for putting it into his hand, because he does not have a holster, which is unconventional for most stormtroopers you can plug it into his hand nice and easy and that hinge hinges down and up just fine so all looking really good that's probably going to stay in his hand for the rest of this review as for a second accessory um this is another part of this figure which really bugs me it's his jetpack which i was actually kind of looking forward to it's a very unique mold and there are two things that really irritate me about this mold though first of all there are supposed to be these parts that extend out from the side, but it feels very sticky and asymmetrical. You really gotta baby it. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> um, okay, so let's explore this. Let's not panic. It looks like they're kind of just slots. There's no real um, axle or anything in there, or, or anything in there. You kind of just plug it in, I guess guess it, it's very finicky i feel like i need to drop this entire figure and its accessories into some hot water kind of with the doom slayers we looked at um this one it seems a little bit better but when you want to close it it's no longer flush with the main pack at the center so that feels really weird my second problem with this uh, jetpack, which I actually had really high hopes for when this figure was announced, is you will notice that there is not a distinct peg on the back. They made it a point that this jetpack would go on via friction and nothing more. So I was very skeptical about it, but I was also hoping, hey, maybe if it works, it'll be a nice revolution within the Hasbro Black Series line. It's not that good, so... Basically, you sport it on, as you can see, they're kind of molded to conform to it. You it do, you can eventually get it there, and it does stay on, but still, it 
whenever I'm moving this figure around, it scares me because even if you give it like as so much as a tap, it you. Uh, it's staying on now. Usually it just falls off for me, which really bugs the crap out of me. And also if you want to articulate the jetpack portions, yeah, it, it kind of just pops right off. I, I really do have no issue with there just being a blatant peg coming out of this to go into a hole like right in there. And then that would give it just enough stability. So I don't know why they're going out of their way to do a whole new thing mechanically that, first of all, wasn't really necessary to begin with, and second, is not an upgrade to what they were doing before. I'm going to get the jetpack out of the way so we can buzz through articulation rather quickly. You can get that much to the side in the head both ways, pretty even on each one. Get a good amount forward, good amount back, swivel all the way around. I think this is a double joint. Yeah, you got a ball joint in the head and a dumbbell joint in the neck. The shoulder pads are pretty much doing what we usually expect them to do these days. They're kind of hinged to the peg that goes into the torso, but the arms can go all the way around and the shoulder pads kind of stop it from actually going any further. You do get a pinless elbow joint, single jointed, goes a good amount past 90. This wrist swivels all the way around, hinges down and up. This one goes a predictable in and not... Oh, actually, good amount out. There's a ball joint in the torso as it meets the waist, so you can go around, and then you can go down that much. Good amount back up, and he has actually a very good amount of tilt. He can kick this much forward, not a whole ton. Same going back, pretty much. He can go out a little bit. Uh, there is a thigh swivel where it meets the calf guard, I suppose you could call it. You get a single joint again at the knees, which go up to past 90, which I really like. I think those single joints work really good for the Stormtrooper body. The, uh, as for the ankles, though, they feel a little bit finicky to me. You could see, like, if I try holding them firm to the ground, you kind of got to balance them out. I just feel like they click at different spots, but that's more something that you could only tell when you actually have them in hand. But all that being said, you can go that much back, that much forward, and then he does have very good rocker, so you can get him in good poses, but then again, since he has a jetpack, you might opt for a figure stand instead. So next on our jade, I have my custom farm boy Luke, which is chronologically a little weird because he's definitely a lot younger than her here, but regardless, they actually size up very well. In fact, I think they're exactly level. Um, as for as for Mike, of course, you have to compare him with Sergeant Creel, who I gave a Kotobukiya LED saber or sword or whatever, because I can't actually find his, the saber that came with him, but that's a me problem. Now to put these two figures beside some other lines, we have May Fex's Harley Quinn from the 2016 Suicide Squad, along with Marvel Legends' Renew Your Vows Spider-Man with um, the Ben Riley head sculpt. And lastly, here they are beside one of our favorites being Muck Muck from the Disney Creature Pack. Kawakian scum! As a final note, I had to opt to give them some 3D printed figure stands because they kept playing games of London Bridges and falling down, like, a lot. As for my final thoughts on these figures, both of them are pretty solid overall. Mara Jade is definitely the best of these two. Um, not only is she a very fun figure to play around with, but also if you are more familiar with the Legends continuity, you're probably going to enjoy her a lot more. You know what characters to pair her up with. You can look forward to hopefully having more Legends figures coming around in the comic line. And also, she's just a very well done figure overall. She looks like Mara Jade. She moves like Mara Jade. She has a really cool lightsaber. She's got her blaster. I, I really like this figure. As for Mike, he leaves a little bit to be desired and he worries me a bit. Of course, he talked about the jetpack, which is not mechanically that sound. And also that shoulder pad is really making me concerned that even though they're moving on to the green packaging, that's not going to necessarily mean that warping is out of the picture, that QC problems are no longer going to be a problem that we lament going forward. He's definitely going to have a hot water bubble bath later down the line. But all that being said, I hope you enjoyed this quick review on these two figures. If you enjoyed what you're watching, as per usual, please be sure to like, comment, and, and subscribe. Oh, suffer the little children. So thank you guys again very much. I hope you're having a great start to your week, and I will see you all later. Uh, you'd think that when you open one of these comic boxes that you'd still get a really nice view of the figure. Well, you'd be surprised. So we go ahead... 
That's like the tenth time they flushed the toilet in the past five minutes. I'm, I'm planning <laughs> on relocating my station. I'm not moving or anything. <laughs> We're just going to find a nice big closet that I have in my apartment, which has a good amount of real estate where I think we can have quieter less interrupted reviews. I'm just so freaking irritated that every time I get my setup, I get the table, I get my little cozy chair, and I get my tripod up, all of a sudden, and then I get the showers, the flushing, and everything, and it just interrupts the whole process, and I have to go behind this door, do something else till they're done, which really, really sucks. So there is a chance in the future we'll have a new setup. I'm going to think about that one for a little bit, so don't be surprised if one day things are a little bit different and our favorite little gold doorknob friend over there is no longer with us, which will be sad, but if you miss him, then I could just take a video of him, take a few pictures, and just let me know. He'll always be here. He won't be gone. No one's ever really gone. But then over here... So many distractions. I'm under arrest now, too. Great.